what I did was I, I took it an extra step. I laid out uh, each of these uh, filters in one in ADS, which is the, the top schematic that you're seeing there. And then I did it again in QCS Studio just to compare the results. So the way that I was able to find the lengths and widths of all these different uh, transmission line segments was I was able to use information from from this plot here okay so I know that we are using a quarter wavelength so in terms of electri electrical lengths that's 90 degrees um, so in the line calc tool in ADS and, and there's also one in QCS studio you can define the electrical length of the uh, the line segments that, that you're that you're uh, trying to design um, you can use the synthesis part uh, you know you plug in all your the parameters for your stubs, substrate and your uh, frequency of operation and all that kind of stuff and you give it your desired characteristic impedance and you you know hit the synthesize button and it works out the widths of the transmission lines okay so um, here are my uh, my substrate definitions you can see that ADS and QS, QCS Studio are very similar so this is why I want you guys to use QCS Studio and I claim that if you learn how to use QS, QCS Studio uh, then later in the future, if you ever start using uh, ADS, it will make that transition, or I, I should say that the transition will be uh, very straightforward for you. Um, anyway, so I, I, I went ahead and did that. I figured out all the, the widths and lengths of all these various uh, open circuit transmission lines, and I did the same thing for all of these guys. And I defined um, you know my T's in order to make everything match up nicely. I talked about that before in our synchronous session. And I defined an S parameter simulation block uh, where I go from 2 to 6 gigahertz. Uh, to, I defined my step sizes there. And then I, I ran the simulation. Um, but before I show you the simulation results, uh, in both of these uh, software packages, you can convert your uh, schematic into a PCB layout. So I did that too. Uh, so the top one is ADS, and the bottom one is QCS Studio. So the purpose of this step is to perform uh, an electromagnetic simulation that's closer to uh, reality from the kind of the idealized circuit. Um, so like I, I mentioned to you guys before, uh, in the circuit, the circuit doesn't model coupling between uh, conductors like this. So, you know, depending on your frequency of operation, there's going to be various degrees of coupling here. Um, so doing the electromagnetic simulation um, allows you to uh, model the the structure more realistically. Um, ADS uses the method of moments and QCS Studio uses the finite difference time domain method. So let's take a look at the results. So here are the results. Uh, we have ADS on the left and QCS Studio on the right. Um, so we were designing a band stop filter for 4 gigahertz. Um, the red curves are the circuit simulations in both cases. And then the blue curves with the dotted lines, uh, those are the uh, EM simulations. Okay, so red is circuit, blue is EM. And you can see that they don't agree with each other. So it produces different results. So that's why it's important uh, whenever possible to do the electromagnetic simulation to give you a more realistic result. Um, comparing these two, you see that the circuit simulations are actually pretty close. You can see here I have a marker minus 44 dB right around uh, 4 gigahertz, you can see that we're, we're slightly off of the, the 4 gigahertz. We're at 4.04, so we're 40 megahertz off there. And then uh, marker number 1 over here in ADS is defined over in this little block. And uh, our minimal point there is uh, 60 megahertz off, so we're at 4.06 gigahertz. The magnitude of our uh, S21 parameter here is minus 51 dB, so it's a little bit different. Um, but uh, I think those results are actually pretty close. Um, the EM simulation results are, are quite a bit different though. Over here in QCS Studio, we have our uh, minimal point right at 4 gigahertz, um, but the magnitude of our uh, S21 parameter is minus 40 dB, where by comparison we're at minus uh, 29 dB over here in ADS. Um, so it's hard to say which one is right. I mean, I assume that ADS is, uh, you know, it's uh, a very well established. Um, industry tool, so I would assume that uh, ADS would be more accurate. Um, so yeah, my, I have a little comment here that comparing the two results, uh, you can see that they're they're a little bit off, 
And uh, the best way to uh, to evaluate the performance of the filter is um, you know doing an actual measurement on actual hardware using a uh, vector network analyzer. Okay, so um, so that's going to be it for this lecture. Uh, in the very near future, I am going to actually print this filter off on a PCB, and I am actually going to perform these uh, measurements on a vector uh, network analyzer. We're going to compare the measured results with our uh, two different si simulations. Okay, so that'll be interesting, and uh, stay tuned to that for that. <laughs> so, so stay tuned for that.